Bertie Bester was a man with a very expensive addiction. A secret so dark that while his wife had an inkling, she never fully understood the extent of it. When he passed on, the truth was set free. But I'm not saying any more. Watch for yourself. On a farm in Stellenbosch lies a forgotten history that's been hidden from the world for years and years, only to be revealed after the death of the property owner. Bertie Bester had a secret, an expensive secret. In fact, let's just call it a habit going back decades. Hidden from the public, tucked away on various locations of his farm, a vintage car collection, unrivaled in South Africa. Almost 200 cars dotted across this farm. Some were no more than broken down rust buckets. Others in mint condition, perfectly restored. There were as many as 100,000 vintage spare parts and memorabilia stashed away. This is an auctioneer's dream. This might be by far the biggest collectible auction that South Africa's ever seen. Until recently, hardly anyone knew it existed. Auctioneer Steph Olafir started digging through this unusual crop over eight months ago, walking through garages and attics for the first time in 20 years. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and I realised that there's something incredible about to happen. We definitely felt like we were treasure hunting and finding items every single day. After eight months on the farm, we're still finding bits and pieces. The impressive collection of classic cars included a 1946 Peugeot 202, believed to be the only one in South Africa, vintage pickup trucks, a 1954 Austin Healey, a Ford Mustang from 1971, a 1936 Ford Roadster, and even a couple of cheeky VW Beetles. What started as a hobby turned into somewhat of an obsession. From fixing bicycles as a teenager to racing cars as a young man, this fascination with wheels has always been in Bertie Bester's blood, reminisces his wife of 55 years, Renette. Oh, when I met him, I think he first loved the cars and then me. And I was quite happy <laughs> to be the second love at that stage. So you knew your place? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. The couple shared many memories on the road together. Surprisingly, Renette was often the driver and Bertie the passenger. It was always funny. He never said, Renette, drive faster or drive slower. He would do this. Bertie would often disappear for weeks, travelling far and wide in search of hard-to-come-by parts and cars in need of some love. He even collected cars from Namibia and parts from Zambia. And they come back with a trailer and a trailer with all these scrap cars and pieces of cars. And I just had to get used to that. Steph believes Bertie's spare parts collection might have bordered on hoarding. But he collected complete scrap yards and all the goods came to the farm. And he, he put it everywhere where he could. To some extent, the reason for hiding his treasures in remote corners of the farm might have been his dear wife. No, because I was always moaning. So it was, you spent such a lot of money with these cars. Why do you buy more and more and more? Because I didn't realise that it was worth some money. <laughs> And he never even told me. But in and amongst the rust buckets are some true rare gems sought after by collectors both locally and internationally. Some of these cars could fetch hundreds of thousands of rands. There's a market for this, not only in South Africa but internationally, and some of these are seriously very collectible. Ian Lobsha is a vintage car enthusiast who is familiar with the best collection. It makes a unique collection because of the variety of cars. It's not just a one make collection. So you've got uh, Opals, you've got Peugeot, you've got Buick, you've got Chef Ford, different cars from different eras. Growing up, Bester's son Albert recalls the magic of meticulously and patiently restoring some of the cars with his dad. My dad saw, I don't think he saw the money value of it, he loved the cars, he wanted to preserve it for South Africa. Bertie Bester had the ability to take a pile of rust and restore it to its original splendor. The cars that we found, it's unbelievable where you find it. I mean, these cars uh, we found, it was in a riverbed. We drove years past that riverbed and uh, we saw just the pieces of the car standing on cars like this Model A's. 
and uh, we went and we, we started dug and we, we found the cars in the riverbed. Looking at these before pictures, you can appreciate that hundreds of hours went into this magnificent restoration. It's not like a modern car today. Uh, we paint them about 20 times over eh, to get the shine. And at the end we use sunlight soap to get them the shine. Yeah. So it's a, a tremendous a lot of work to restore a car like this. It's not um, just to do it. It's not like a modern car that you just pay once or twice. And, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. 60 restored vehicles and 18 rust bucket barn finds went under the hammer along with all the spare parts, some still in their original packaging. We've got hubcaps here, we've got spokes, we have even steering racks, old window frames, gearboxes, engine blocks from the 1935s, we have bumpers, the variety is just endless. Everything. Just about everything you need. Everything that you need for restoration, you will definitely find here. It's difficult to see money in this because you just see scrap again. But this is worth something. It's definitely worth, in a collector's point of view, if, if he is restoring a vehicle and he is looking for a part from the 40s, this is the place he might find it. But even as a collector of many different car brands, Albert says his dad most definitely had a favorite. He, at the States, had the most forts in the world, even more forts than any forts museum in, in America. Uh, we had four Model T, 1911, Model A's, V8 Fords, still Ford, new Ford Mustangs. And he just loves his Fords. Some of the cars were not up for auction, though. The family have kept a select nostalgic collection. Albert promises they're not just for show, they will be driven. This cars are, have a soul. They, they, they have small little quirks that you have to know about. Né? Like that view that you was there, you have to pump the petrol three times to get it started. Né? We're new cars, must this a new car. I mean, but these cars are special. They, they have a personality of their own. Even Renette has her favorite. She and Bertie did rallies in this 1938 Buick. She still takes it out for a spin occasionally. What is it about this car? It drives fantastic. I don't know how to drive a car with problems, because that's like an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> it is a beaut. The oldest car up for the taking was another Buick, a 1928 model. It was called a Tourist, 1928 Tourist, which means it doesn't have windows and clothes. It's not a sedan. And uh, it's a unique model with the uh, artillery wheels, which is the wooden spoken wheels which is quite special, and uh, it's got the six, uh, big six engine. While it went for 370,000 rands, the entire haul brought in close to 8 million rands on auction day. Besides the big local turnout, there were more than 30 online bidders from six countries. As the dust settles after the auction, Renette reflects on the mysterious wisdom of Bertie. When I've got my quiet time with the Lord, then I always say thank you for having a husband who could work hard and have the outlook of giving me a good life after he went 